Greetings my fellow followers of Marduk. If you are watching this on the day that this video was released, that is the 1st of April, then you're probably aware of the fact that today is April's Fool's Day. Today is a day of shitposting and tomfoolery. But today was also a very important day for a different reason about, eh, I don't know, let's say about 4000 years ago. You see, back in those days, in the area between the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, laid the city of Babylon. And in the early days in the, of the month of Nisan, or Nisanu, the Babylonians celebrated a spring festival called Akitu. If you happen to be Jewish or Assyrian, or you happen to have some familiarity with the Hebrew calendar, then you might be yelling at me right now about how I'm butchering the pronunciation of the word Nisan. Or the fact that a form of Akitu is actually still celebrated by modern day Assyrians till, the, till this day. Rest assured that I mean no disrespect. You see, I happen to have a minor interest in ancient Mesopotamian history and mythology. And it was by complete coincidence that I found out that this spring festival of Akitu used to be celebrated during the first few days of April. So, instead of creating a shitty April's Fools video, I decided to talk a bit about Akitu instead. Partly because I think it is really interesting, partly because I want to shed some light on, on the cultural practices of a minority group of the middle, in the Middle East that is not often really talked about, but also partly because I'm a massive nerd and I, need an, and I needed an excuse to think about ziggurats and the Cage of Ishtar. So, let's talk about Akitu. The purpose of this celebration, as it was originally celebrated, remains something of a point of contention. But, as far as I can tell, was it done to celebrate the sowing of barley? You see, Nisanu in the Babylonian and Hebrew calendar was the first month of the new year. And on 4 Nisanu, the Babylonians would begin a conglomerate of festivities. In this festival, two gods from the Babylonian mythology played center stage. Nabu and his father, the supreme god Marduk. Interestingly, in this time period was Marduk not really referred to by this name, since his name was considered too holy to be pronounced. Instead, he was called Be'el. Wow, I have barely begun and I've already committed the ancient Babylonian equivalent of blasphemy. I am on a roll today! Anyway, on 4 Nisanu, the high priest of Esagila, that is, the temple of Marduk, would open the festival saying that the new year had begun. For the people of Babylon, this meant the beginning of a holiday of a week. On that day, the king would then travel to the temple of Nabu, to the north of the city, to receive the royal scepter from the high priest and spend the night at the temple. At the, at the same time, the high priest would then also recite the Babylonian creation epic, the Enuma Elise. Now, the Enuma Elise is a topic that is honestly too broad to discuss within the scope of this video, but needless to say, it details the creation of the world, humanity and their role to serve the gods, and a battle between Marduk and the evil Tiamat, who has also been speculated to be the mother of all chromatic dragons. Though, I am not sure that is still canon within Mesopotamian mythology. Interesting side note, there have been many different copies found of the Enuma Elise, and the Assyrian and Sumerian copies tend to be different from their Babylonian counterparts. The Babylonian versions tend to put Marduk on the center stage, while in the Assyrian versions it tends to be the god Ashur and not Marduk. Meanwhile, in Sumerian versions, Enki or Enlil tend to take center stage. It is often speculated that every city back then had their own version of the story, with their own chief deity taking center stage. Back to Akitu. The next day, on 5 Nisanu, the king would return to Babylon. Accompanying him would be the statue of Nabu. The statue would be left at a specific gate, while the king would then go to the temple of Marduk to meet the chief god. During this meeting, the king had to have a humble disposition, meaning that he had to lay down his weapons, his crown and his scepter, and explain that he had not sinned against Marduk. The high priest would then listen to this story and hit the king very hard on the cheek. This was important because the king had to have tears in his eyes. 
At the front of the statue of Marduk, the king would then receive an oracle about the future of the coming year, and would be giving back his uh, royal insignia. And the next day, the statue of Nabu would be brought to the temple of Ninurta, where it would defeat two enemies, in the form of other statues of course. It would then move to the temple of Marduk and join his father. At the same time, statues of all the other gods would appear. On 7 Nisanu, all the statues would be cleaned and receive new dresses. Then, on the day after that, the festival would reach its climax, when all the statues would be brought out from their rooms and shown to the people. All the other gods would then be present to honor Marduk, and the ruling council of Babylon would announce its policy for the next year. After this, the gods would start a tour of the city to the river. Here, they would board a small fleet and sail to the house of the new year. I presume this was another temple. The king himself would then guide the statue of the supreme god. In the final part of this journey, the gods would be placed onto chariots and driven to the house of the new year. During all of this, the people would be singing all kinds of songs, which includes a hymn to Ishtar, the goddess of love, war and sexuality. What happens after this is not entirely known. There's still a lot we don't know yet about the Babylonians, and this is partly because we don't fully understand their language, and partly because many of their tablets are also broken and fractured in many places. From what we can tell, it seems that on 9 and 10 Nisanu, some form of sacrifice was made, and that on 11 Nisanu, the gods would return to the temple of Marduk. After this, they would see Nabu off and everyone would go home, gods or human. And that is it really. There is not really a whole lot more to say about this, besides the fact that during this festival, many people would consume a dish known as Tuhu, a kind of uh, lamb stew. Personally, I find this festival really interesting, because it gives an insight in a historical cultural event that was not a war or something like that. I know that browsing history YouTube can kind of give you the impression that most of human history was, you know, wars, but that does not really reflect reality in my opinion, and it's good to read about something that would be more about the daily lives of people in this time period. Plus, you know, I love stuff like this, so obviously this was something I had to jump on. Now, before I go, I would like to apologize for how badly I probably pronounced the names of these calls and places. I can barely speak my own language properly, so this was bound to happen. In any case, Happy New Year, and may Ishtar bless your harvest to be bountiful, and your love to be overflowing. Have a good one.